What they do, Jones Crew, it's your girl Crystal, and I'm back at you again with another live video. You already know the vibes. Yo, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the little bell so you never miss a video because I'm coming at you real, real hot. Make sure you like the video. That way more people can see this video. That way more people can know exactly what we're dealing with here in regards to the takeoff situation. Now, in today's video, guys, we're going to dive right on into none other than J. Prince Sr., he is the man behind the motive. He is the man behind the mystery of why Takeoff's case is not being solved, why there's no justice for Takeoff, there's no arrest being made. We're going to get into the history of J. Prince Sr. And if you haven't watched none of my previous videos, make sure you go check those out just so that you are caught up with all the information that I have been putting out there, guys. There's a lot of good videos, a lot of good content that I released on this situation, hitting it head on. Okay, so today we're going to dive into Suge Knight versus J. Prince. We're going to go back into the history of J. Prince being involved with the feds, having that relationship with law enforcement, having that relationship with the government is the reason why he keeps getting away scotch-free off of every single thing that he is involved in, as well as his son. This call is being recorded. What did the do? He was caught selling dope, and he never went to prison. If you get a guy that constantly getting in trouble and never gonna come to prison, that's because he's an informant, he's a rat, a snitch. During a conversation from prison, Suge Knight alluded that Jay Prince Sr. is an informant. In a conspiracy that included Suge, Jay Prince, and Irv Gotti being brought down with several federal charges, leaving Suge Knight and Irv Gotti to be incarcerated and broke, losing everything they had to their name. And yet again, Jay Prince Sr. walks away unscathed, uncharged, and unexplainably more powerful. The three men had big business plans to unionize the music industry and create a distribution service in the early 2000s. After the three met, they believed there was an informant in the room or the room was bugged because after that meeting, both Suge Knight and Irv Gotti simultaneously had federal charges brought up against them, leaving Suge Knight and Irv Gotti bankrupt and locked up. Suge Knight to this day says it was Jay Prince that set them up because he was the only one left untouched out of the entire ordeal. Jay Prince, during a Joe Rogan interview, described how the three were going to join together to form the first Black-owned distribution service and unionize the music industry. This would have given the three of them dominion over all the other music labels. Okay, this deal would have made all three men billionaires. Therefore, making the men extremely powerful. Due to the distribution aspect, they would have controlled the entire narrative of popular rap culture. Now, all three of the CEOs believe the room was either bugged or someone had to have been an informant because right after the meeting discussing the plans of the business, all three men were brought up on charges. Irv Gotti ended up going bankrupt after years and years of fighting a federal trial. Around that time, we all know from my previous videos that Jay Prince had an open investigation where the DEA were charging him with drug trafficking, which ended up being closed after Jay Prince made a million dollar donation to, at the time, Vice President Al Gore. Soon after, Suge Knight was sent straight to prison.
Now, moving right along into our next story, we do have the story of a music executive by the name of Ronnie Booker that was badly assaulted by Mr. J. Prince Sr. and was actually able to file a restraining order as well as a lawsuit against J. Prince Sr. So we're going to go ahead and get right on into that story, guys. A temporary restraining order requested by recording executive Ronnie Bookman was issued against James Prince, a.k.a. J. Prince, following allegations that Prince arranged for Bookman to be beaten over a dispute involving Houston's hip-hop industry. In finding that imminent and irreparable injury will result in the absence of injunction relief. Presiding Judge Patricia Hancock ordered Prince to avoid coming within 500 feet of Bookman's home or place of business. So this judge found that if there was no restraining order in place, that Ronnie Bookman would be an Im imminent and irreparable injury, okay? Now, according to the lawsuit filed in April 12th, Bookman alleges his beating was an attempt by Prince and his Rap-A-Lot 2K records to bump off Bookman's growing record label. Bookman claims he was attacked by a half dozen men January 25th at the recreation center owned by Prince. After he was invited there as a part of an effort to clear up the issues between them. As a result, Bookman suffered severe head trauma, a broken nose, and injuries to both eyes and is still receiving treatment. The lawsuit further states that the dispute arose when Prince and rap -A -Lot agreed to allow their artist Bernard Bun B. Freeman to record on a song on one of Bookman's artist albums. The feature was made in exchange for discounted slash free studio time at Bookman's studio 7303. Soon after Bun B recorded the CD Trill at the studio, which was released in late 2005 in conjunction with Warner Brothers Asylum Records. But when Warner Brothers approached Bookman with a label deal similar to the one Warner Brothers already had with rap -A -Lot, Prince allegedly reneged on his promise to release the Bun B feature. Okay, so you can see here, guys, this record executive is stating clearly that Mr. J. Prince didn't want him to flourish. He didn't want him to start his record label. He started off as a studio owner and would let people come in and rent out the studio to record their records. Now, once he began to want to flourish in life and come up, become a record executive as well for himself, Mr. J. Prince Sr. had a lot of issues with that and did not want him coming out with a label because he thought that it would stop his own gain and stop his own money for his own record label, rap -A -Lot Records. We believe that Mr. Prince feared that his influence and financial well-being would suffer if Mr. Bookman and 7303 Records were successful, said John Thomas, lead counsel for Bookman. A Harris County, Texas court hearing is scheduled for April 23rd. Now, I did get the information for this story on The Hollywood Reporter, which you can find on Google. It is public information. Now, regarding that case and that lawsuit that Mr. Booker had against Jay Prince, it seems as though the prosecutors d dismiss assault charges in Jay Prince Jim beating case. In the case where he lured this man to his gym, allegedly, and beat him senselessly, the charges were dropped the charges were dismissed guys so you can see his power you can see his hand in every single situation every investigation pertaining to mr j prince senior 
is not looked into, it's dismissed, and there is no investigation ever. Now, the Harris County District Attorney Office has dismissed aggravated assault charges against Jay Prince, founder and CEO of Houston's Rapalot Records. Rapalot announced today the charges stemmed from a January 2007 incident at Prince's Prince Complex Gymnasium where Studio 7303 owner Ronnie Bookman alleged Prince ordered him beaten up because he would not sign a contract selling part of his interest in 7303, a local recording studio. Before the criminal charges were filed, Bookman had filed a $10 million civil suit against Prince. A criminal trial had been scheduled for August 4th, but after reviewing Bookman's disposition in the civil case, prosecutors decided to drop the charges. According to the Rapalot statement in the deposition, Bookman admitted to numerous violations of state and federal law, including money laundering, mortgage fraud, tax evasion, and several acts of perjury. In addition, Bookman provided a version of the offense that was in wide dispute with his previous versions and that of other witnesses. So basically, the prosecutors took it upon themselves to dismiss the beating charges brought up against Jay Prince. Even though Mr. Bookman had pictures of himself being beaten up, even though the judge warranted a restraining order in the case, they completely dismissed the charges because of what was said in a civil case. Now there again, guys, you can see the power, you can see the hand, you can see the affiliation with the government, with the law, with the donations, so on and so forth. Guys, make sure you like this video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Will there ever be justice for takeoff now that we're digging up all this information regarding the Prince family, regarding their background, their history with rap -Lot Records, with J. Prince Sr., and the power that he does hold. Do you guys actually think there will be justice for takeoff? Let me know down below in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Please make sure you like this video so we can go ahead and get all the information out there to everyone that everyone needs to see this information, guys. And the way we're going to get this information out there is by you actually liking the video so YouTube can promote the video in their algorithm so that everyone can see what's going on, can see the background, and everyone can make the connection for themselves in their own mind. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button on the way out. Comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.